Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. All right guys, so this is part one of building a brand new off-grid solar system and wind-powered system. Uh, so if you guys are new to the channel, um, I'm building a brand new 100% off-grid home. Um, we just got done doing some work in there. We just got done doing a brand new bathroom. Um, we're out here, we built this brand new building to house all the inverters, the charge controllers, the batteries, and a bunch of other good stuff in here. Okay, so for part one, guys, before you can even start thinking about, you know, um, what you're going to buy to um, power your home, because there's so many choices, guys, right? There's 12 volt, 24 volt, 48 volt, and 60 volt. And um, each, each of those systems um, has its pros and cons, okay? Everything has its limitations. Now... Before you can, before my suggestion is before you start buying all this equipment, you know, to start putting something together here, um, you're going to want to do your due diligence, okay? So what I mean by that is you want to be able to um, figure out exactly what you're using in your home, right? And only then will you know exactly what type of system you need to build. So this is a brand new home that we're building, right? And um. You can do this with an existing home. So if you're living in a home that's already pre-built already, um, you can um, do the same thing, okay? But what you need to do is you need to figure out what you're going to be consuming, how much power you're going to be utilizing, how much power you're going to need. And so the best way to do that is sit down with a piece of paper. I've already done this already, so um, I know what my number is. Um, I don't know what your number is, right? So um, my house is pretty simple the way I laid it out. Um, all you have to do is figure out how many lights you have. So in this case, I have, what, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have at least ten lights that's inside the home. We also have lights downstairs. We have lights outside. Um, so it's pretty easy to figure out, guys. Sit down and calculate how much you're using. So add up all the, the, the total amount of wattage or usage that you're using in your home. So your lights is an example. So if you have ten lights and each light is... 10 watts well you can it's pretty easy to figure that out right and then you can estimate on average um how, how long you would be leaving on each each of these appliances right so if you had 10 lights on um for say six hours a night minimum um then you could you can figure that out right just times it all out and figure out exactly where you're going to be uh, as far as the the wattage and the, the usage you're going to be using for your lighting um, and then you can figure out what you're going to be using for your refrigerator um, cause your refrigerator doesn't run 24 seven, but it does kick on and off throughout the day and night, um, to maintain the temperature inside the refrigerator. Right. And now here's a quick tip for most of you that do, do not know this. If you look on the back of pretty much any appliance, um, there's supposed to be a spec tag. Okay. So when I go shopping for my refrigerator, which I've already done, um, I actually pull the refrigerator out and I look at the back of the refrigerator to see what kind of power, um, that refrigerator is consuming, right? Because the idea here is that you want to bring down your electricity usage and your loads in your home as much as possible by running very efficient stuff. So all all of my lights in my home are LED lights. So they they use they do use power, but very small amounts of power compared to um, the standard that you you'd be used to, right? So you want to get LED bulbs if you have. TVs, you want to maybe switch them out if you don't already have LED TVs. Um, I have LED TVs and they work great, guys. High def, super high definition, um, and it uses b barely any power compared to the standard TVs that are out there. So try to look for an LED TV. You're going to save money. I mean, so, sorry, save power on that. Your refrigerator, do your due diligence when you go shopping for your refrigerator. Um, look at the power on the back of it. You want to write all these things down because you need to add up everything towards the end so on your piece of paper you know once you're once you got it all listed out and you have a roughly like okay so i'm running my lights roughly six hours a night and you you want to compensate right overcompensate on everything um a little bit so that way you have um you're oversizing the system a little bit when you get ready to build your solar system. Um, so once you have your total number, you have to account for everything. If you have a laptop that's plugged in or a computer that's plugged in 24-7 and on, account for that power. So every, anything that's plugged in that consumes power, um, you need to calculate how much of that power you're using and for how long you're using it, right? And then once you have your total number, you'll, have, you'll basically have a number of what you're using per day on your home. 
Every home will be different. No home will be the same, okay? Um, we have different style lights. We have, as far as how many lights, different refrigerators, different appliances, right? And so do that calculation first, guys. And then once you do that calculation, then you can actually figure out, um, you know, how big of a solar system um, you need to build. So uh, that's the first step, guys, okay? So part one is figuring out how much power you're going to actually use. Only after that can you determine the size of the system you're going to go with, okay? If your power usage is really, really small, um, then you can go with a smaller solar system, right? You don't need all these big, fancy, expensive equipment. You can get away with something that's a lot more cheaper, uh, a lot more smaller, um, you know, that kind of stuff. But then if your house is going to be consuming quite a bit of power, then you're going to have to make sure that you accommodate for that, right? With bigger equipment, things that can handle that type of power. Uh, so there's lots to be considered when you're doing something. Ideally, if you could, 12 volt is fine. Yes. Um, but if you could go to 24, 48, or even 60 volt, that's better off for you. Um, but it does cost more money as you go up. Okay, so just be aware of these things. So the idea is to bring your energy usage as low as possible in your home with energy efficient appliances. That way, when you get ready to build your system, it doesn't have to be so massive. It can be a smaller system, right? And if you don't pick things that are energy efficient and you don't do these things to change things around to make it more energy efficient, then yeah, you're going to have to go and, you know, go and buy and build a really big solar system to power all those things. So be cautious of what you're buying and what you're installing. You know, even if you're not going to be building a solar system for off the grid, but you just want to save power, it only makes sense. Go ahead and swap out all your light bulbs to LED light bulbs. You know, um, if you can afford to swap out your refrigerator to something that's more energy efficient, go for it. Right. That way, you're if you're paying a electric company, at least then it's going to be a lot less than your normal normally what you're paying them right but you know if you're building something off grid like in my case you have to pay attention to the numbers you have to pay attention to what you need to make it all work okay the last thing you want to do is think you can go buy say two solar panels and two batteries and you think you're going to run your house maybe if you have nothing in there besides maybe like one or two lights or whatever it may be right um but you have to scale the system accordingly to what your your demand is Okay, so that's going to be part one, guys, of understanding your home. So, you know, I figured that out. I just calculated the refrigerator. I calculated all my lights, my plugs, my laptops, all, all these things that get plugged in. I calculated, and I also calculated for downstairs because downstairs is getting built out as in about a month or two. So we're going to start building that out. So I already accommodated for those appliances down there, right? So you need to think ahead so that way... Um, you, you know, you're not underestimating your solar system when you get it because the last thing you want to do is build a small solar system and say, oh, this doesn't work, you know, or it's not enough. And then that's because you didn't do your due diligence to figure out exactly what you needed in the first place. Right. So anyway, guys, this is just part one here um, of building the um, brand new off grid power shed power building power wall. Um, I've already did that calculation. So I already know what I need. Um, so part two, we're going to go into more of building this um, building everything out the equipment that I'm going to be using, um, laying the wire, um, a whole bunch of other things um, to actually make everything work. So part one is just understanding your usage and trying to become more energy efficient on the appliances that you're using. That is very crucial, people very very crucial so anyway guys um part two is coming out tomorrow and we're going to continue this series of videos here as they come along until i'm completely done building out the um the new building here so anyway guys if you guys have any comments or questions or anything um you know go ahead and leave a comment uh if you guys like the videos hit that like button if you guys are not subscribed subscribe because all the really fun stuff guys is about to go down so definitely stick around so anyway guys i'll definitely see you guys on the next one